Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. If we differentiate then by rule, so page 25 of the log tables, so what you'll find is this list of functions and their differentiated output. Okay, so somebody, some mathematicians have gone to the bother of figuring out the generic case of typical functions and what they look like if you differentiate them. So that means that we do not have to differentiate every single function from first principles. We can use these rules here to do it much faster. Okay, so the first one I'm going to take down there is x to the power of n. So when f of x is x to the power of n, f dash of x, the differentiated one becomes take down the power n, x and subtract one from the power. So what I'm saying is that power n comes down in front and you subtract one from the power. So regardless of what the power is here, we take one away from it. Okay, this is the most used rule in the leave insert in calculus. Now, what does that mean? Okay, well, if I go back to this um, sum that I did, 3x squared plus 5x, okay. Okay, what the rule is telling me, which is here, is that I can take down the power in front and reduce the power by one. So how does that work? Well, in this term here, I'm gonna take down the two and I'm going to reduce that power by one so that it gets three times, take down the power, reduce the power by one. So you can see the three doesn't disappear. It still stays there. Um, it's a constant, it, it, it has no rate of change. So the two comes down, it will eventually get multiplied by the three x and two minus one is one. So I think this to the power of one, we don't normally bother writing it down. The five x then, okay, is, I'll do it the long way. The five stays there, take down the n, it's one in this case, x to the power of one minus one. Okay, five times one is one. I have, in this case, x to the power of zero and anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, so in fact, I get five times one times one there. So six x plus five is my final answer. Okay, when you get used to calculus, um, you tend not to write this line down. You tend not to write this line down on the more simple ones. So in other words, you go straight from here to here. Okay, if you go back, you can see 6x plus 5 here. 6x plus 5 here. So you can see how good the rules is. It is so much faster to differentiate by rule. Okay, one for you to try. Differentiate, and I'm not going to say it from first principles, which means you can do it by rule, 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5x plus 2. So I want you to differentiate that by rule for me and put the answer into the chat box. And don't heed the powers, you can just write down the numbers normally, I'll know what you mean. You'll go three threes are nine. Oh, sorry, I meant to leave a gap because I'm going to show the line in the middle in a minute. So you're going to get 9x squared. So three threes are 9, reduce the power by 1, plus two fours are 8, reduce the power by 1, plus uh, take down the power, five ones are 5, reduce the power by 1, plus zero for the two. Why is zero two? Or why when you differentiate two, do you get zero? Well, if I was to ever graph 
the line f of x is equal to 2. That is just a flat line at 2. So its rate of change or its slope is 0. So that's why any constant will always have a slope of 0. OK, so now just to fill in the line in the middle. So the 3, this 3 stays here. I take down this 3. I reduce the power by 1. OK, so in effect, that's my n and that's my n minus 1 that's up here in my rule. OK, plus 4 times, take down the power, reduce the power by 1. Plus, take down the power, reduce the power by 1, plus 0. OK, and then you get the bottom line. OK. Um, what I want to put in here now is a couple of the other rules. OK, so like I said, that is the most common rule. OK, but you can see there's a plethora of other rules there, all that needs addressing. So if I give you a function that states f of x is equal to 3x squared plus ln of x plus e to the power of x plus e to the power of 2x. So this one becomes two threes are six x, power of one, plus from the log tables, ln of x becomes one over x. e to the x, you can see it here, stays the same. So e to the x, and then e to the ax, you can see the a comes down in front. So our a is two, so the 2 comes down in front and we get 2e to the 2x. f dash of x, or you can call it dy dx, it's the same thing, is 6x plus 1 over x plus e to the power of x plus 2e to the 2x. Okay, let me give you one more and then we'll call it a day. Let's go uh, 4 plus uh, sine of x minus... Uh, 3e to the 4x. So if we have a look at this one, 4 becomes 0. Sin x, if we check the log tables, becomes cos x. Minus 3, take down the power, that's my a here, e to the 4x. So if I just tidy that up then, cos x minus 12 e to the 4x. Okay, so when we look at calculus one, an awful lot of what we are doing is using what's in the log tables. So differentiation by rule is so, so handy because it means we don't have to do everything from first principles. The rules have been proven, they have been laid out for us, we just take whichever one of these rules applies to the question, okay? And then all's hunky-dory as long as the terms that you're differentiating are um, either sum or difference terms, so you're either adding or subtracting, then calculus is straightforward enough. Uh, it gets a little bit more difficult when you have um, functions multiplied by each other, functions divided by each other, or functions uh, linked together um, and for them we will use the product rule, the quotient rule and the chain rule. So there's no product rule, quotient rule, chain rule in first principles. Um, if you get a first principles that looks something like x plus 2 squared, if you got something like that to differentiate from first principles, you would have to work that out using algebra first and then use calculus. Okay, so work out the brackets, get it down to something like that and then do first principles, okay? Because there's no product rule, no quotient rule, no chain rule in first principles, okay? But when we're differentiating by rule, um, we absolutely do have products. We absolutely do have divide by functions, also known as quotients, and we absolutely do have functions that are chained together. 
So if you have a copy of your log tables, pull them out in front of you at this page. We will use it an awful lot. We will tend to also use um, indices for it a lot, especially the reciprocal one. That's very common where if we have one over x squared, we tend to write that as x to the minus two, for example. OK, why? Because then that allows us to do the um, x to the power of n, take down the product to take down the power, reduce the power by one. It allows us to use that rule as opposed to having to do the quotient rule on this. So if you can write it um, as, I suppose, a to a power, it's much faster. The other one that tends to get used a lot is the square root. OK, so as you know, if I have x squared and I need to solve for x, um, x is the square root of of whatever the term is, OK? Uh, inherent in the square root sign is a little too just there. We tend not to ever put it in, though, because square root is so common um, that we don't need to, OK? But if I had x to the power of 3 and I need to find what x is, that is the third root of whatever the number is, OK? Um, so this is what that rule in orange is telling you. Whatever is the number here, matches here. The other thing I should say is that um, the third root of something is also can be written as to the power of a third. Okay, so we never really use the square root sign in calculus. We use indices because again, it allows you to take down the power, reduce the power by one. Um, and out from that, then you're just going up and down through the rules finding whichever one looks like the term you're trying to differentiate, OK? So the questions I have today is mainly on the first half of cal calculus. So calculus one, it's called in some books. Um, it is not the applications of calculus, it's the chapter before it, OK? What's not included in this section yet are the inverse um, functions. I will come to them in due course. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.